Today on the channel we are talking about quads and specifically this, the Beta FPV 95X version 3. Now this is a whoop from Beta FPV and in this video I'm going to give you my thoughts on this small quadcopter. Now this model is available in multiple configurations, both bind and fly as well as a kit. Beta FPV very kindly sent me over the frame, the motors and the flight controller to allow me to build this digital model you see in front of me here. This one is fitted with the DJI Cadix Vista and Nebula camera which means it is fully compatible with the DJI digital FPV system. Now as I said this one actually came to me as a kit and what I'm going to do in this video is walk you through what I actually got, take a look at the new flight controller, show you how I put it together and then give you my thoughts on this little quad at the end. But don't worry if you don't want to build it yourself you can buy this as a bind and fly or ready to fly model directly from Beta FPV as well and I will put a link to that in the description of this video too. Too. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is take a closer look at the flight controller, the frame and everything else. Then we're going to put it together and then give you some of my thoughts. In the kit I received from B2FPV, I have a flight controller, the frame kit as well as the motors and props. As part of this kit, I received the latest version of their F4 all-in-one flight controller. This is the Toothpick F405 2-4S version 4. It supports the STM32 F4 SoC and has the MPU 6000 IMU. It has LED buzzer and UART pins, supports SBUS, DSMX and TBS and also works with the Betaflight OSD. One nice feature is that it is also plug and play compatible with the DJI FPV ear unit and it has a built-in 20 amp ESC and power module. It supports all the usual modes including one shot, multi shot and D shot and it can supply 3.3, 5 and cam power. Because this is an all-in-one controller it weighs just 5.76 grams and it is 26 mil by 26 mil in size. Included with the kit you get a pre-wired power cable with a built-in capacitor and XT30 connector as well as a little bag of cables for the pre-wired harness for the DJI FPV system as well as connectors that allow you to use it with plug and play motors. Now talking about motors I also received their 1106 3800 kV brushless motor set with this kit as well. Now this is a plug and play motor set which has the connectors pre-wired on the ends so I would need to solder those connections onto the flight controller and we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later on. The final piece of the kit I received is the frame and this is the Beta 95X version 3. It features a 100mm wheelbase and it weighs just 39 grams. It's made from PA12 plastic but features a carbon fibre core for mounting your motors and flight controller to. This frame is designed to be used with their 1106 motors as well as their F4 all-in-one flight controller. Also included with the frame you get some foam bumper as well as a battery strap and all of the mounts and connections for putting your camera on board too. Now I had the frame, the motors and the autopilot, the last choice was what receiver and video system I was going to use and I decided to go DJI Digital FPV and ordered the Nebula Nano Version 2 kit from Cadix which includes the Cadix Vista and the Nano Version 2 camera. Now I had everything I needed, it was time to start the build and the first job was to solder the connectors onto the flight controller to plug the motors in. Now I only needed to do this because I am using their plug and play motors. If I was using any others I would have simply soldered them directly to the PCB. Now to do this it was simply a task of putting the connections in place, putting a little bit of flux on and soldering each connector up one at a time. Whenever you're doing anything like this you just need to be careful that you are soldering very carefully and making sure that you're only getting solder where it needs needs to go. Once that was done it was simply a task of soldering on the battery connector and then putting the flight controller into the frame. Now there are four pillars that stick out of the frame that allow you to put it in place and you simply install the little rubber o-rings into the holes to make sure that it's got a little bit of vibration isolation. Once that was done it was then time to mount the motors onto the frame using the four included screws making sure that they're not too long and they're not going to go into the coils on the motor themselves. Once that was done, the last job then is to simply plug each motor connector into the correct ESC on the board. Now when you're doing this, you just need to be careful that you do have it the right way round and simply push the connector in and make sure your wires are nice and tidy because there's a little slot for them in the bottom plate that allows them to go through without getting chafed. 
As you can see, that's the first part of the build complete. We have the flight controller mounted in the frame, the motors attached to the frame and connected to their correct corresponding ESCs. Now, the next task was to get the ear unit set up. Now, as I said, we're using the Cadex Vista kit for this one. Now, in this kit does have everything you need. You get the Vista ear unit, the Nebula 2 camera, as well as an antenna and wiring harness as well. They also include a little instruction set with this kit too, just to show you where the wires go on the board. Now, because this is the Vista it is not plug and play on the ear unit side you do need to solder the wiring harness to the board but that harness is directly compatible with the flight controller so you simply would solder the connections down the side and it's ready to go now because this is the Vista it is much smaller and lighter than the standard ear unit and it has the camera pre-connected as part of the kit they also include this little antenna and whilst this isn't the standard antenna that Beta FPV use it's the one I'm going to use on this build. As you can see the build is pretty much finished. I've got the Vista at the back with the wiring harness coming over the top into the plug and play port on the flight controller. The antenna is then plugged in in the top left hand corner on the back of the Vista and as you can see the wires have a little bit of tape around them and this is simply to keep them together because they need to run down a narrow channel in the bottom of the craft. Now overall the setup with the Vista on this is very simple. Once the wires are soldered on as I said earlier it simply plugs into that port on the flight controller which which supplies both the UART connection and the SBUS connection as well. As you can see, the build is finished and overall it's come out very well. Now the Beta 95 version 3 is a very nice quad and it weighs just under 120 grams. Now this is the digital model, as I have said, and we've got the Cadex Vista mounted at the back. And whilst it's a tight squeeze, it all does go in. Now one interesting feature about this quad is that it is inverted with the motors and props actually hanging down from the frame rather than being on the top. There is also a bit of a strange motor order for this as well and you do need to take that into account when you're setting it up but there is a special tune for that. Now the props themselves are held onto the motor simply by pushing on with two hex screws holding them tight. Moving around to the front you can see what we've got the Cadex Nebula sitting in the bracket with the small isolating board sitting on the top that allows you to mount an external camera as well. Now I'm going to be using this with the Beta FPV 450 milliamp hour 4S batteries and they say that you get around three and a half minutes flight time with these and that's about what I'm seeing in my testing indoors at least. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Now, it's really been a build video more than anything. It is, though, a few weeks later, and I've had a chance to put some time under the Beta 95X. Whilst I haven't spent as much as I would have liked due to the human malware and weather, I have been able to get it out in the field a few times, and I've been flying it around the house. Now, whilst this isn't the smallest and lightest whoop, it is a very nice size aircraft, and if you're looking for something smaller than your traditional 5 and 6 inches, this is well worth a look, especially if you want a digital one. Now, it isn't the lightest, however, when you are using it with the 450 milliamp hour battery from Beta FPV, it does help keep the weight down, but you know the Cadex Vista is hanging on the back of it and you can feel it. Now, because this is the one I built myself, it does have uh, the Cadex Vista antenna hanging at the back. When you get the original one, the proper antenna sits in there without an issue. Now, overall, I have to say I really do like the aircraft. The design is nice. I'm not sure about the benefits of that inverted prop design but what is good is having the enclosed props because it does mean that you can bounce it off walls and doors without worrying about breaking props every two minutes something i have found though is the battery does like to move around on the top and i'm going to put a bit of velcro on that to hold it on more than the little rubber pads that are in place already now and again i have found as well the screws come a little bit loose on the cadex vista camera i'm going to put a little bit of loctite on them to hold them up but that's not really something i can blame beta fpv for it's simply as a result of the build now this is available as its parts from the beta fpv website or you can buy it as a fully ready to go kit from around 279 dollars depending on what setup you go with whether you want it with analog digital or receiver and you can go on their website and choose the model that you want to get and the one that best suits your needs overall for me it's nice to have a smaller aircraft on the table and especially nice to be able to fly it around indoors when the weather is bad 
It's not as small as I would like for indoor flying, but it certainly isn't as bad as flying something like that. Now, I will make an updated video on this when I've got a chance to put it out a little bit more and I've had a bit more of a play with the tune in beta flight. I did try another tune on this, which was recommended, and I highly recommend steering well away from other ones that you see out there until you've had a proper chance to play with yours because that one newly set my motors on fire. Whilst these motors are not the coolest in the world and I think there's some improvements in the tune that can be made there, that other tune, literally, I could barely touch the props or the frame and they almost melted, in fact. It got that hot after just one or two minutes flight. Anyway, um, that's it for this video. If you have found it interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. I will give you guys an update on this in the future as well. If you'd like to support the channel, there are some links to various things in the description of the video as well. And it is only by you guys supporting us via those links and subscribing am I able to keep making videos like this and talk about it. I'll also put a link to this and the website for Beta FPV as well if you're interested in getting one. That's it. Please stay safe wherever you are and I will give you an update when I've flown it again soon.